After ending his first season in the Borough hot seat by guiding the club into 12th place in the Premier League, Gareth Southgate reshaped his squad for his second campaign. It would prove to be a busy summer for the manager, with a number of departures to give us some new faces pulling on the red shirt. A great deal of excitement surrounded the arrival of Turkish international Tunçay, who joined Borough from Fenerbahce. The 25-year-old made worldwide headlines when he scored a Champions League hat-trick in December 2004, as Fenerbahce defeated Manchester United by three goals to nil. As Turkey's first-choice striker, Tunçay is a massive star in his own country and aimed to make a big impact at the Riverside. Jeremy Alliadier added to Southgate's attacking options when he put pen to paper on a £2 million move from Arsenal, the club that the 24-year-old had been with since the age of 16. From attack to defence, and at £2.5 million, Luke Young looked a bargain buy from Charlton Athletic. Young signed a four-year contract at the Riverside, and at 28 years of age, the fullback was a defender in his prime. As the fans prepared to see their new signings in action, it was also time to say farewell to others. Mark Viduku had scored some vital goals for the club and made a major impact in the run to the UEFA Cup final in 2006. The centre forward had also scored some vital goals in Gareth Southgate's first season, and attempts had been made to convince him to stay, but the Australian national decided to move on to Newcastle United. Stuart Parnaby had been with the Borough since his days with the academy, but he possibly needed a fresh challenge and accepted an offer to join Birmingham City. Danny Graham was also a young player to end his association with the Borough, as after a spell on loan with Carlisle United, he sealed a permanent move to the League One outfit. James Morrison was part of the side that had lifted the FA Youth Cup in 2004, and he'd also scored Borough's first goal away from home in Europe when he opened the club's account in Ostrava. Morrison swept the Riverside for the Hawthorns, and he signed for former Borough captain Tony Mowbray, who was the boss of the Albion for £1.5 million. Also saying farewell was Abel Xavier, as the Portuguese international decided that his future would lie in America, where he teamed up with David Beckham at the LA Galaxy. So with all the changes in place, the season would begin on a warm August afternoon against Blackburn Rovers. Injury would prevent Luke Young from making his debut, and Jonathan Woodgate was also on the comeback trail, so including the starting eleven was David Wheater, who would make a terrific impact during the campaign. But Borough's new season would get lift-off thanks to another local lad, the highly talented winger, Stuart Downing. on the right hand side and there's the header and there's the equaliser here come Blackburn in the penalty area then the shot goes in and Blackburn take the lead the opening day defeat was a bitter blow and the players had to try and recover from the following Wednesday as they travelled to Wigan JJB Stadium would be Yakubu's final appearance in a Borough shirt. The Nigerian international, who had arrived on Teesside in July 2005 from Portsmouth, had made it clear that he wanted to leave, and Borough accepted a bid of £11.25 million from Everton. As Yakubu started at Goodison Park, Southgate acted quickly to bolster his strike force, and he paid £6 million for Mido from Spurs. Borough would go on to complete an Egyptian double, as midfielder Mohamed Shorki would also join his fellow countrymen. Shorki had 42 caps for Egypt. It would be Mido who's given his debut at Fulham, where he'd make an instant impact as Borough sought a much needed win. This has got bad. One side, Smertens continued his run, hooks it back into what's hitting McBride, surely! 1 0 to Fulham. McBride's hurt himself in scoring as the fans celebrate. He's lost out in midfield, downing quickly forward. Mido with the touch. This is Arker. Mido again. Goes for goal! Oh, and what an error by Tony Warner! Mido's been gifted a goal on his Middlesbrough debut by the hapless Fulham keeper. Well, there will be another sizeable chunk of added on time, so uh, there's every chance for either side to pick a winner. Here's Ali Adier, and here's Catamol! And he might well have picked the winner for Borough! They've come back from behind and could be heading for their first win of the season. So with the first win under their belts, the players were in good spirits ahead of the local derby with Newcastle United. 
Valentine Day's clashes are always special, and Borough were delighted that Jonathan Woodgate was fit to make his first start of the season. It was a big afternoon for Luke Young, who made his debut, and the fullback would quickly settle in. But extra spice was added to the Riverside showdown as Mark Viduka made a return to his former club, and sadly, in a terrific derby, he would also make his mark. George Boateng for company in Zogbier, but he's shot inside him onto his right foot and shoots and scores. Good bit of control from Rockham back in the centre circle. Chips to Mido, who's onside. Mido, Mido shoots. Yes, he's equalised. Mido has scored. Miller on the left-hand side for Newcastle. BBC T's 1-1 is the score still. And there's Jeremy's ball into the area. Mark Viduka. Viduka still. Viduka scored. And this is what we feared. Mark Viduka. Instead, it drops to Rockenbach. Back into the area. Edge of the area. Yes! Arca! Julio Arca scores the second equaliser of the afternoon. It dropped to him on the edge of the area. Left-footed, it may have taken a touch or two on the way through, but Julio Walker isn't bothered in the slightest because he's got the equaliser. The attention for the final game in August switched from the league to the cup as Borough faced Northampton in the Carling Cup. Here's Rockenbach, strikes it! That strikes it into the back of the net. Well, most of the time they don't come off for Fabio Rockenbach, but when they do, they're special. Brad Jones rolls it out to Dunjai and Downing. Downing towards the edge of the penalty area, back to Dunjai. Dongook Lee turns right front in, he scores! At last, Dongook Lee opens his middles for a count. What a classy finish it was! As August came to an end, the closure of the transfer window brought some activity from the borough, as with the clock ticking towards midnight, Gareth Southgate was delighted that finally Gary O'Neill completed his move from Portsmouth. Meanwhile, Jason Ewell, who'd struggled to make an impact at the Riverside with only nine Premier League starts, left to join Southampton. With the transfer window now closed until January, the squad could settle down, and September began with a home match against Birmingham City. The Blues included Stuart Parnaby in their starting 11, but he would leave the Riverside disappointed as Borough produced their best display of the season so far, and David Wheater really started to make some headlines. Walker tried a right foot into a play shot into the net. It took a deflection. Here's Taylor. Just Taylor crosses Wheater. Three out of David Wheater. And Borough take the lead. What an excellent goal. David Wheater, a real threat. He's a good defender, Paul, at the other end, but he's a real threat in the box, attacking wise. Andrew Taylor going past the defender, got his head up, clipped a perfect ball up just in front at the penalty spot, and David Wheater attacking the ball, getting across his defender, a great finish as well, Paul, porking it in. He's got his back to goal, he's laid it off for Taylor. Taylor's ball into Boateng, Boateng, and it's down, it's in, it's 2-0, and it's Stuart Downing, and it was so easy, wasn't it? It was disappointing that after such a terrific display that there was now a break for international fixtures, and two weeks after the triumph over Birmingham, Borough ran out at Upton Park. Gary O'Neill was on the bench as West Ham United were relieved that the Borough seemed to have left their shooting boots back on Teesside. A local derby was just the tonic after the West Ham United reverse, and the clash with Sunderland would be a terrific advert for North East football. Sadly for Borough, there will be a late twist in the game, and the former black cat Julio Arca would find both delight and pain against his old club. Miss Grant Ledbetter, would you believe it? Early on, Sunderland are silencing the Borough crowd here at the Riverside. Julio Arca gets a in with his right foot, but it's headed out by... Dwight York is back defending. Jonathan Woodgate feeds Arker again. Good ball out to the right hand side. And Gary O'Neill. Gary O'Neill's crossed. The header comes in. Yes. Gary O'Neill's put it into the back of the net. It's an equaliser. And it's the man who made the short journey down the A19 against his former team. For a back on level terms. 14 minutes gone. Julio Arker's header. Craig Gordon couldn't keep it out. 1 1. Stuart Downing Paul just 
gesticulating to the whole fans. Boateng to Downing. Downing right foot in shot! For a leading 2-1 and two minutes of normal time left. Be very interested to see how much added on time we're going to get as the shot comes in. Oh, would you believe it, Sunderland have equalised. Two minutes from time and it's Liam Miller who's got the equaliser. It was a cracking goal. Sadly, the injury to Julio Arca would rule the Argentinian out of action till December and he would be a big miss after starting the season so well. Borra then faced a tough trip to Tottenham Hotspur. The Carling Cup would give little to cheer in North London. The final game in September brought an away day to Everton, and included in the Toffees starting 11 was Yakubu. It would sadly prove to be an afternoon of Mersey misery for the ball. Both hands up in the air and puts his cross in, right footed, glancing header over the top, it's hit the bar, Lescott has nodded it in, and Everton are in the lead. Comfort, Pienaar flicks to Arteta, Arteta to Pienaar, there's two, Everton double their money here at Goodison Park. An away day at Manchester City began October for the Borough, and injuries to the strikers meant that Gareth Southgate handed a rare Premier League start to reserve team centre forward Tom Craddock. Left footed, it comes in, it's not cleared and it's in. Well, it went in, and Manchester City have the lead. It went off all sorts of bodies. And now City on the attack with Alano through the centre again. We'll feed him Penza, first time ball in towards Michael Johnson. Johnson with a clever back heel, Alano shot! 2-0 to City. Alano is there as well for Manchester City. It's Alano who hits it. What a goal. O'Neill to Hutchinson. And O'Neill again. Good move. Tunjai on the edge of the area with his shot. Hart can't hold on. There's a goal. At least Borough have scored a goal. It's 3-1 and it's Ben Hutchinson. Andrew Davis had been captain of the side who made it to the FA Youth Cup final in 2003. He moved on in October, initially on loan, to pursue his career in the Championship with Southampton. After the break for international matches, the Borough returned to the Premier League as Chelsea arrived at the Riverside. And here's Drogba through. Fed by Lampard, Drogba scored and Chelsea have taken the lead. Lampard is uh, right near the ball as Mark Halsey blows his whistle. A layoff to the right and a fantastic second goal for Chelsea. You just cannot stop that kind of thing. The Premier League is a demanding division and after the defeat by Chelsea, next up was a journey to the champions, Manchester United. November started for Borough with a home clash with the side who knocked them out of the Carling Cup, Spurs. In a tough spell for the club, Luke Young was standing out as a model of consistency and the fullback would choose a match against one of his former clubs to score a goal that would live long in the memory. Here are Spurs on the attack with Steve Marbron to Darren Bent. Bent's on the edge of the area, shoots Darren Bent and Darren Bent has scored. Seemed to go right through Mark Schwartz at the near post. Darren Bent, the edge of the area, right-footed strike and it beat the Borough keeper. For a 
pressing for this equaliser early in the second half. BBC Tees, Tunjai to Taylor. Taylor gets his ball in, it takes a deflection, but Gary O'Neill picks it up. Great ball from O'Neill to Luke Young! Luke Young's Thunderbolt but borrowing good heart for an encounter with Bolton at the Reebok. And away it is at the Wanderers can be times when a result just has to be ground out. Chances in the game were strictly limited and the players were happy to settle for a goalless draw. The Premier League then had another break as England tried and failed to qualify for Euro 2008. And after the international disappointment for the national side, Borough suffered a major headache against Aston Villa. Gareth Barry picks up the pieces on the left-hand side for Villa. Into the box, Carew turns and scores! Disaster just before half-time, and it's John Carew from Gareth Barry's cross on the left-hand side. Carew was given time to turn and bring the ball under control, and his right-footed finish beat Mark Schwarzer. Added on time at the end of the first half, a nightmare for an ill Villa one. Here comes the corner from Young, it's headed out by Stuart Downing and back in again from Petrov. Oh, Lee Catamore's made a complete hash of that one, it's 2-0! Lee Catamore hits it high into the... This is dreadful. Here's uh, Villa at the other end with that. Bon Lahore! 3-0. It. It. It's just a disaster. It's 3-0, and now people will begin to walk out of the Riverside. It's Agbon Lahore who scored it. Mark Schwarzer did get a touch. December started with Boren's 17th place and facing a difficult trip to Reading. Mark Schwarzer missed the game with a broken thumb, and his replacement was Ross Turnbull. But just when Borough needed inspiration, they would find Turkish delight from Tunshine. Here's Dave Kitson at the other end. Kitson for Reading. And that's what we didn't want to happen. Luke Young. Young onto his left foot, crosses into the area, headed out, but it'll fall to Stuart Downing. On his right foot, could do with being on his left. Bikey just gets in there with the defending. Good spell this for the Borough. Excellent ball from Bolteng to. Luke Young down the right hand yes! side, and it's in! Guess it! And guess who it is? A first Borough goal for Tunjai in front of the Borough fans there, here at the Medeski Stadium, and Borough score at last. In a tough winter spell, probably the most difficult fixture to face would be an encounter with unbeaten Arsenal, who were in top form. Jerry Aliadier, though, relished every moment against his former club, and this was to be one of the best Riverside displays of the entire season. Got the ball back now, rocking back, and George Bolteng just loses it, but it runs kindly to Gary O'Neill in the centre circle. O'Neill through to Aliadier in the penalty. Yeah. And goes down. It's a penalty. Here's Downing, he's scored! Stuart Downing left-footed, Almunia dive to his left-hand side, but what a great penalty from Stuart Downing, calm under pressure, and what a start, four minutes in, and Borough 1-0 up. Still with Fabio rocking back. Into the middle, here's Tunchai Matuni! a chance to make it 2-0. To hold his run, keep on side and invite the pass from Rockenbach, which was a peach. He's done everything right, really, you know. Great play by the Borough down the left-hand side. Oh. Ali picks out O'Neill. O'Neill loses it for Bolteng! And Bolteng shoots wide. So close to his first goal of the season. Here comes the corner into the penalty area. Gary O'Neill saved by Almunia. Shot it out! Tunjai, he's prolific, it's 
2-0! Oh, it's fantastic, isn't it? It really is fantastic. Uh, Arsenal come forward with Gallas down the left-hand side. Last chance this for an Arsenal goal from Rosicki. So it's no clean sheet. Rosicki pulls one back right at the end with a right-footed finish. Borough's first victory since September had the team in great heart for an away fixture at the bottom of the table club, Derby County. Tunchai was looking to make it three goals in three games, and the Turkish international would achieve his aim with a contender for the goal of the season. Now Derby with Matt Oakley up towards Kenny Miller, but David Wheaters there, Wheaters ball forward, being picked up by Downing. First time for a Oh, what a goal from Tunchai! It's three out of three for the man from Turkey! And what a finish! Downing's cross, Tunchai's finish! 1-0 to Middlesbrough! The first thing to say about that, Paul, is David Wheater getting in front of Kenny Miller. He's got a great contact on the ball. I'm not saying for one second that he's meant to find Stewart down there. I'm saying that his defending to get in front and read the ball into Kenny Miller was exemplary from David Wheater. His clearance finds Stewie down. The ball in the box is a gem, isn't it? It really is. Back-to-back -back wins had brought back conference. There was also a welcome back to the starting eleven for Julio Arca in the match with West Ham United. Arca had been sidelined since recovering from medial ligament injury and made his first start since September. But sadly, the 90 minutes would have a late twist. Downing then with a free kick to the far post. Stanley and he is there. Nick It's the second of the season for David Wheater. It comes with six minutes to go to half time, and Pura deserve that. Downing's ball in, the header back across goal, and big David Wheater there to finish it off. So Pura keep possession of the ball, but there's George McCartney. McCartney with a, a ball over the top. Camera and Ashton. Oh, equaliser. Dean Ashton. minute, the last 30 seconds of the 90 minutes. No board yet from the fourth official. West Ham in the area with Scott Parker. Oh, Parker scored. Scott Parker scored what could turn out to be a winner for West Ham. Borough now faced back-to-back -back away games over the festive period, and there was precious little to cheer in the Boxing Day journey to St Andrews. The final game of 2007 gave Borough supporters a long journey to the south coast as the team faced the informed Portsmouth. But those who made the long journey had a great reward thanks to Tunshai. Downing puts oh. the ball in. Oh, is it the man yes. loses it in? It's Tunjai! Yes. Gary O'Neill will want that one, but Tunjai will claim it! The new year began with an opportunity to build on the success at Portsmouth, but Everton, with former Borough striker Yakubu in the starting eleven, would prove too strong. Welcome back to Luke Young in the penalty area. Can he pull it back? He can. But oh, there's Downey's cleared off the line, or it whizzed past the line. There's three Everton defenders on that line when Stuart Downing hit it in. Yakubu to Pinar the edge of the area now Andy Johnson, Andy Johnson scored, Everton have scored, it's Andy Johnson, Stuart Downey's given the ball straight to James McFadden, McFadden to Johnson, McFadden again, surely it's 2-0, it's disastrous, it's all going wrong again in front of the Riverside faithful for the Borough. The FA Cup gave Borough a chance to regain their momentum. For a long journey to Bristol City, they were flying high in the Championship was hardly a kind draw. National TV cameras were there expecting an upset, 
but two players who are playing key roles in the season, David Wheater and Stuart Downing, would keep the cup dream alive. Southampton won Leicester nil, a later score from in the FA Cup as City take the a free kick, it's in, it's in the back of the net, Bristol City have scored! Stuart Downing though on the edge of the area, Downing shot, it's in, an equaliser! A mistake from Basso, and Borough back in the match through Stuart Downing, Borough's top scorer, five for the season. Rita now just uh, strides forward a little bit, Luke Young on the right-hand side, good ball into Lee Catamol inside the area, Catamol, the finish oh. is from David Wheater. What a quality goal, and Borough take the lead, and it's that man, David Wheater. Great ball from Luke Young to Lee Catamol, who ran into the area and squared it for centre-back Wheater. After the FA Cup, Borough now concentrated on the second half of a Merseyside double, this time with Liverpool at the Riverside. Jonathan Grounds, who was the reserve team captain and a young left back, was drafted into the first team for his debut. Grounds didn't look out of place as Borough made their point. Now George Bolting, neat turn from Bolting to Downing on the left-hand side. Downing ball in, Bolting had gone for the return. It might drop to Ali Adier. Yeah. It's in, it's been forced over the line, and it's the Borough captain. He's back in favour, and he's got a goal. It's George Bolting. The Liverpool defence couldn't clear it, and the captain was there, right on the line. Bounces for Gary O'Neill. O'Neill got Tunjai in the area. He's just been forced a little bit wide. Tunjai there. I thought he was in for a sec. Here's Downing! Oh! Downing's hit the post. Gary oh. O'Neill's hit the crowd. Oh, with a rebound. Gary O'Neill fired over the top, but Stuart Downing hit the post with a terrific left footed shot. Here's Torres. Torres with a right footed shot. There's the equaliser. What a stunning goal from Fernando Torres. Backburn Rovers were the visitors on the opening day of the season, and now the reverse fixture brought Borough to Ewood Park in a match they created enough chances to have won many times over. When Ali Adier and Sunjai at the back post, here comes the free kick. It's towards Wheater at the oh. back post. Oh. Wheater's there. Oh. Wheater puts it into the back of the net. Middlesbrough take the lead from a free kick. It's 1 0 to the Borough. Borough lead by a goal to nil. There's just over 15 minutes remaining here. Jason Roberts is into the box. It's a wild shot from Roberts, but it's so bad. It's dropped for Matt Derbyshire to get the equaliser for Blackburn. Derbyshire is Borough's scourge once again, as on the opening day of the season. Games in January come thick and fast, and yet again the TV cameras were following Borough's FA Cup trail, as the draw found Gareth Southgate's side again in their travels, this time to lead two strugglers, Mansfield Town. And he's going to take this second successive corner. That's a better one. Muggleton can't get hold of it. It's there. It's Don Googly who scored. Well, that doesn't happen very often, but it's happened here at Field Mill this afternoon. Ali Adier with a pass sideways to Stuart Downing. Now Rockenbach. Rockenbach finds George Boateng inside the penalty area. Boateng's cross. It's in. It's probably an own goal on the line. The header came in. But nevertheless, Borough have got their second goal. The first month of the new year came to a conclusion with a vital home game against fellow strugglers Wigan. Tunchai out to uh, Downing. Great ball by Stuart Downing for Ali Adier. Inside the box, Ali Adier scores! His first goal in front of the Riverside faithful. And it had been coming for every one of the 19 minutes we've had so far. A beautiful ball through from Stuart Downing. A supreme finish from Jeremy Aliadier. January also saw the opening of the mid-season transfer window, and there were departures and a significant arrival to Gareth Southgate's squad. Jonathan Woodgate had joined Borough initially on loan from Real Madrid, but the central defender was happy to turn the move into a permanent transfer after a superb first season at his hometown club. Sadly, the second season for Woodgate was hit by both injury problems and a feeling that he would like to try his luck elsewhere, and he left Borough to sign for Spurs. Ben Hutchinson had also decided to leave the Borough to try and make his mark in Scottish football with Glasgow Celtic. Arriving at the Riverside was Brazilian centre-forward Afonso Alves, and Gareth Southgate broke the club's transfer record to secure the signature of a player from Heerenveen, who was the Dutch league's top scorer and player of the year in 2006-2007.
The 27-year-old made his debut for Brazil at Wembley the previous June, and he was given a huge welcome when he arrived to be unveiled to the fans, who were all hopeful that the new player would have as big an impact as the other boys from Brazil who have played for the Borough, in particular, of course, Juninho. Alves was delighted with the reception and then settled down to adapting to life in the Premier League. February started for the Borough with a date at St James's Park, and for Robert Huth, the derby with the Magpies would bring a special moment. Touchline. To be taken left-footed by Emery into the box. The header there. The goal is there. Michael Owen scores Newcastle's first goal. Arca's cross. There's the header. Yes! Oh, it's in! It's Robert Huth! It's the equaliser! It was a header that stayed in the air for ages from the cross from the right-hand side, and St James's Park is silent, brought from a small section of Borough fans. A great point at Newcastle United was followed up by another crucial home game as struggling Fulham arrived at the Riverside. It was another six-pointer as the Borough battled for their top flight future, and for successive home games, Jeremy Alliadier would prove a match winner. There had been some speculation concerning the future of Stuart Downing, but the local lad gave Borough a February lift by agreeing a new five-year contract, and a key factor in the decision was the ambition shown by the signing of Alfonso Alves. The England winger is one of Gareth Southgate's prize assets, and the boss was delighted that Downing sees his future at the Borough. Back to action on the pitch, and yet again the FA Cup draw had been less than kind, as an away tied Sheffield United was always going to be tough. Ahead of the replay with the Blades, Borough at Anfield, and the match would produce not only a five-goal thriller, but also a hugely controversial moment that would end in a ban for Jeremy Alvier. Lee Mason just uh, telling Stuart Downing that he's ready for it. In oh. comes the free kick, Tunjai's free header, and the goal and the offside flag stays down. And far from fearing that Liverpool would get the early goal, well, the Borough have here. Tunjai is back in the starting lineup. has put Torres in here, Torres is inside the penalty area, goes round Schwarzer and equalises. Well, Julio Arca and Borough's good work has been undone. Now Babel, Liverpool look a little bit more uh, purposeful here. Torres edge of the area, shoots! Oh dear, you just can't stop that. Fernando Torres has scored two. Drops to Julio Arca. Arca tried to play in Stuart Downing, but he just gave the ball to Dirk Kout. Out with a long diagonal ball forward, Wieter and Schwartz is out of the area. All sorts of things going wrong here, and Fernando Torres has scored his hat trick. Arker, a little bit tight in the middle of the field there with Steven Gerrard trying to win the ball back. Arker's great ball to Downing. Downing in the penalty area, Downing Get scored! In. Now this could set this game up for an excellent finish here. Stuart Downing ghosted into the penalty area. He was played in and his finish was excellent. 3-2, a Borough lifeline. And here's Luke Young going on, but he's uh, robbed by Mascareno, who wins Liverpool a throw-in. Well, the Liverpool faithful are not happy. You listen to them regarding that decision. They thought it was a handball. I didn't think it was. And there's Gareth coming out the technical area. You're saying to all fans away at the left. Get behind us, we've still got a chance of getting into this. Well, what's happened here is that uh, Jeremy Aliadier's hit has been sent off for something that went on when the Liverpool were about to take a throw in. There was a push by Luke Young, and then Aliadier came over and had words with Mascareno, I think. And Aliadier, well, he was provoked a little bit. 
and he's hit out of Mascareno. And so to the FA Cup replay with Sheffield United. Seb Hines was given a start as David Wheater served a suspension and Wheater sat with the fans to cheer on the team. It was a long night that needed a moment of luck to win it and the intervention of both Mido and the Blades keeper, Paddy Kenny. Luke Young coming forward. Mido heads it down to Tunjai. Mido! Mido's shot! shot it bounced out of the post and it's quite unbelievable and it's gone in of the Sheffield United goalkeeper Paddy Kenny who is lying down in despair Borough celebrate they could be going through to the FA Cup quarterfinals So an FA Cup quarter-final beckoned for Borough and in the Premier League the side in 12th place. Ahead of the Reading game, David Wheater, who was having a terrific season, agreed to sign a new three and a half year deal. This was great news, but the match with the Royals would be a disappointment. Borough clear it towards the halfway line. <sighs> Reading on the attack again. And here's Hunt. Hunt into the penalty area. Oh no! This is a Reading goal. James Harper. <laughs> in added on time at the end of this match. The late Reading winner was a blow, but the league disappointment made way for FA Cup expectation, as a bumper crowd gathered to witness the quarter-final with Cardiff City, all hoping to see Borough claim a place at Wembley in the last four. Sadly, what followed was 90 minutes of sheer heartbreak. Capaldi's going to take this throw in again. With 10 yards up from the corner flag on the left-hand side, it's nil-nil. Throwing goes right into the edge of the six-yard box where Julio Walker heads it out. Surely a foul, but nothing given. Quick feet from Whittingham inside the box and a shot! And a fantastic goal for Cardiff City! They take the lead through Peter Whittingham. And the fans go mad behind the goal away to our right. Here's a free kick from them. Whittingham's taking it into the area. It's 2-0. It's a header on the far side. The FA Cup exit left the fans feeling numb, but the players had to quickly focus on a Wednesday night Premier League match at Aston Villa. So soon after the Cup despair, the occasion demanded a response, and the loyal supporters who travelled to Villa Park were rewarded with a committed 90 minutes. Wheater up towards Tunjai, decent pull forward that. Tunjai all on his own though, and that night clears. Not the most convincing clearance in the world. Here's Stuart Downing. Downing into the penalty area, left foot in shot for Stuart Downing! And a Borough goal, Gareth Southgate up on his feet to celebrate because that could be a crucial goal here. And it was neatly taken by Stuart Downing. Gareth Barry flicked on into the penalty area, Young at the other side, another handball, and this time it's a penalty. Steve Bennett has given Aston Villa a penalty for a handball, he had no hesitation at all. 28 minutes gone in the second half. Barry then to level things for Aston Villa, left-footed and into the back of the net. And so to the Emirates. Jeremy Aliadier made his first return to Arsenal since his summer transfer, and he certainly had a match to remember. There's a free kick from Schwarzer, and uh, Tunjai's in there, Whoa! Aliadier has scored! <laughs> Jeremy Aliadier back in the team, back at Arsenal, and back on the goal-scoring trail! Fantastic! What a start! Hey, I'll tell you what, we've been asking for it, haven't we? Could we get, could we put the cat amongst the pigeons? And that's what we've done. Nine corners they've clocked up for Arsenal as it comes into the penalty area now. Toure's header into the back of the net. Toure has equalised for Arsenal here. Points at Villa and Arsenal restored some pride. But the home game with rock bottom Derby County was one that Borough can't simply had to win. Taylor up to Stuart Downing. Downing in turn down the line where George Boateng's made a run. Great ball infield to Tunjai. 
Tunjai edge of the penalty area. Right foot in front, and there's the goal that we wanted from Tunjai. He scored at Pride Park in December, and he scored here at the Riverside this afternoon. Brilliantly worked down the left-hand side. Great ball in field from George Bolting, and Tunjai did the rest. The final game of March had Borough heading for the capital to take on a Chelsea side who were in a race with Manchester United for the title. Stamford Bridge had not been a lucky ground for the Borough, and in the Sunday showdown they would play well, but hit the woodwork, not the net. Four and a half minutes gone, Wayne Bridge puts the free kick into the area. There's Carvalho, there's the goal. Ricardo Carvalho rises, the free kick from Wayne Bridge. Wieter gets a foot in and does well to find Catamull. Chipped over the top now, Alves moving out towards the left. Could have seen, he's all the way out of his goal, hasn't got there. Alves, can he get the shot away? He does so! Oh, he's oh. hit the post! Afonso Alves has hit the post and it's bounced into the arms of Cudicini. April opened with a home clash with Manchester United. Games with United are amongst the most eagerly awaited of the season and a large crowd gathered to watch Borough take on Sir Alec Ferguson's champions. This was to be a terrific 90 minutes and announced the arrival of Alves onto the Premier League stage. Giggs with the in swing and corner towards Ronaldo. He misses it. Pogatetz gets a header to Carrick. Carrick on the left in the box. Across the face of the goal and it's into the net. And it's that man, Ronaldo. Pura with the ball. Flick on Ali Adier. Alves into the box. Alves, what a goal! That's the moment, Afonso Alves, up and running in a Borough shirt. It's the equaliser, Middlesbrough won, Manchester United won, Afonso Alves strikes. It was all about the little flick, wasn't it, from Jeremy Aliadia, aware that Alves has made the run in behind him, just that little touch just to move the ball away from Rio Ferdinand into the path of Alves. He's taken a touch, his composure's brilliant. Schwartz is fit to continue, he's knocked it long and Ali Adia challenging, bricks for Alves, Alves in the box, takes the shot, Afonso Alves makes it 2-1, oh it's taken him so long to get off the mark and now he just can't stop, Ali Adia's flick on, Alves in the box, oh slots in home with precision past Alves, Borough lead Man United by two goals to one. What a finish again, hey, eh? what a finish. To Park on the right hand side, Taylor will track, sells him a dummy. Park into the box, looks for a red, uh, black shirt. Oh, when Rooney takes the shot, deflected off Wheater and the level. Boosted by a great point against United, Borough arrived in White Hart Lane. And yet again, Stuart Downing showed why Gareth Southgate was so pleased he'd been able to persuade the winger to sign his new deal. Here's Genus, what's happened here? Genus allowed to go right through the middle and Borough eventually getting men back. Bit of a mix up as Spurs continue their attack. Berbatov, Leonard, oh, it's in, it's in one way or the other. Jonathan Grounds with an own goal, I think. Drops down to Stuart Downing. Downing right footed shot. Ah, it's gone in! Stuart Downing, Wall is running, turn he doing in the Spurs goal. Stuart Downing on his right foot. Sadly, the match at Spurs would be Gary O'Neill's final outing of the season, as he had to undergo knee surgery following his injury late on in the game. Borough were making progress towards safety, with only one defeat in six games. But Bolton Wanderers were to give Borough hopes of recovery a blow, as they were also battling for their top five futures. Corner from Taylor, free header, and it's in. It's been put in by Gavin McKnight on the line. With the season coming towards its conclusion, Borough travelled to Sunderland for the Weir Tees derby. The survival mathematics were becoming clearer as a win for either side spelt safety. Ahead of the match at the Stadium of Light, Borough had problems in goal as Brad Jones came in with both Mark Schwarzer and Ross Turnbull ruled out with injuries. It would be a tough afternoon for Jones and the rest of the defence in a derby that started rich in promise. The header is won by Emmanuel Pogatetz. Afonso Alves picks up the pieces and plays Tunjai in. Tunjai in the penalty area, oh, Tunjai in oh. scored! What a fantastic start! Danny Collins for Sunderland, cross in, and an equaliser, a header going in from Danny Higginbottom. Chopra 
is in behind the Borough defence here into the penalty area. Goes beyond David Wheater and scores! He was unselfish and popped the ball out there to Stewie down and great block from wide and he's Alves. There's Alves is in. Gordon saved it, it's yeah. not in! It's trickled over the line for Afonso Alves in front of those Borough fans! Corner comes in from the left-hand side, it's gone in. Oh dear me. Sunderland have scored in added on time in the first half and added on time in the second half. Borough were left with two home games to round up the season and pick up the points needed to stay away from trouble. Chris Riggett made a surprise return for the Portsmouth game as he was recalled from his loan spell at Stoke City, who were pushing hard for promotion. Riggett would certainly remember his Borough return. And Riggett's header! And Chris Riggett has put it into the back of the net! Borough get the all-important first goal here! Corner comes in, the header comes in! And a second goal of the afternoon from Tunjai! And it's the second goal from a corner! Unbelievable stuff! So with safety assured, the final game of the season gave the players a chance to put on a show for the fans. And they duly obliged in a never-to-be-forgotten 90 minutes that blew Manchester City away. 0-0 at the Riverside BBC tees. Riggins long ball forward is Tunchai. Tunchai was took back and that's a penalty. And it could be a sending off as well because Richard Dunn took Tunchai back. He was clean through and Richard Dunn has been shown a straight red card. The Manchester City captain season ends early. He is sent off. Borough have a penalty. Stuart Downing scored one against Arsenal earlier in the season at the same end. In front of the Manchester City fans as Phil Dow blows his whistle. Downing left foot it and Stuart Downing edges ahead in the leading scorer stakes for the season. Nine he's got now, left footed, superb penalty. The advantage goes to the Borough, they lead 1 0. Tunjai, Tunjai just holds up play, finds Rockham back again, edge of the area, ghosting through. Alves! Alfonso Alves with goal number four of the season on the left foot from inside the area after good work from Tunjai and also up there from Fabio Rockham back. Excellent finish by Afonso Alves, that's what he's here for! Now George Boltek, left footed cross into the box, good cross as well. Downing! Oh, what a stunning goal from Stuart Downing! Gareth Southgate wanted him to score two this afternoon! And Stewie Downing has responded with a brace! And what a fantastic volley! And hey, what about this? Borough have scored three goals in a match! Would you believe it? Sunji high robbed by Stuart Downing. Tunjai almost played in Alves. It might still happen. Alves is onside. Are we going to see four? Afonso Alves, we are! Yes, we are! The ball just creeps over the line. Similar to the Sunderland goal that Afonso Alves scored. Hey, these Borough goals are like London buses. You wait all season and hardly any come along. And now Got it back. Adam Johnson left footed shot deflected and in. And it's number five, Adam Johnson. The deflection wrong footed Isaacson in a city goal. Goal number five of the afternoon. It's turning into a right old route. Phil Dow measuring the 10 yards out. Fabio Rockenbach's on it. Afonso Alves has. Uh, Gone into the penalty area. Here's Rockham back. Oh, he's scored! Oh my word, that is absolutely fantastic! And if ever there was going to be an afternoon where Fabio Rockham back was going to score one like that, it was going to be this afternoon. That, that is the 
the goal of the season. Is uh, Stewart Downing again into the box onside Ali and yes, seven, seven nil, and Jeremy Ali and yes, in on the act, a magnificent seven for the Borough. And I tell you what, the expectation level ahead of next season is going up notch after notch after goal after goal. It's seven nil. Milano for Manchester City. They're looking to get one back. At least left footed, they got one back as well. Terrific goal from Milano, left footed, and the Borough crowd are <laughs> applauding as well as the Manchester City fans. Mark Schwarzer, oh. not a prayer, it's 7 1. But Sven Joran Eriksson does not need three minutes of added time. He's sending the message over now, so we will see very shortly. But isn't football ridiculous sometimes? Here's Ali Adier, here's Alves, it's goal number eight. Alfonso Alves has scored a hat-trick, his first in English football, and it's 8-1, that is 8, <laughs> E-I-G-H-T, 1. And so Gareth Southgate's second season in charge ended with the club's best win in 34 years and their first eight-goal top-flight performance since 1950. Most important of all, it gave the fans a taste of what everyone hopes will be a terrific campaign next time around. What was, at times, a difficult season ended with Bayern 13th place with 42 points. The supporters' Young Player of the Year was also the player with the most community appearances, underlining David Wheater's talent and his love for his hometown club. A year before the award, Wheater was on loan at Darlington in League Two and in a remarkable 12 months has established himself as a Premier League defender together with receiving an England call-up by manager Fabio Capello. The supporters player of the year was Stuart Downing, who also finished the season as the team's top scorer with 10 goals. It is astonishing to think that the youngster from Pallister Park is still just 23 years of age, and his best years lie ahead of the England international. The award was a great reward for a fine player who has committed his future to the borough. So with young local stars such as Wheater and Downing pulling on their hometown shirt with great pride, and a record signing in Alfonso Alves looking full of goals, there's a great deal of hope that when it all starts again in August, Gareth Southgate's third season in charge could be one to remember.